Welcome to 18th lecture of video course on Tribology. This is a last lecture of module 4. We have covered 3 modules earlier that was introduction of Tribology, then friction, third module was on wear and fourth module on lubrication and this is the last lecture in lubrication module. The topic of uh, present lecture is a lubricant additives. It was mentioned earlier, this is very difficult to get the best performance by single lubricant without any addition to that or simple uh, base oil. We require number of properties and on a single oil can sustain or uh, provide those kind of properties. That is why we require lubricant additives. In last lecture, say so last to last lecture, we covered uh, EP additives and friction modifiers. Those were additives mixed with a mineral oil to enhance the property related to friction and load carrying capacity. Today we are going to cover a few more, but before we start up that, there is a need to spare some time finding what is the need of these additives with some examples. First example is the gears. Say so the gears are subjected to very high contact stresses and due to the high contact stresses lubricant will be squeezed out and there will be metal to metal contact. To avoid the failure, to avoid the seizure of gear, we require EP additives, what we call as extreme pressure additives. As an earlier lecture it was mentioned, is a misnomer. Even though the name is says extreme pressure additives, they work with the temperature. They are effective at the high temperature and because of the high temperature seizure occurs, welding of two component occurs and we want to avoid that. That means, EP additives are a factor of the high temperature additives or the high temperature. As I mentioned that typical example is a gear. This is a simple uh, solid model of the gear pair and uh, there is a contact shown over here. The whole gear load is transmitted on either on one tooth pair or two teeth pair or three depends on the contact ratio. Let us take an example of the one tooth pair. Let us say one tooth of one gear or gear and one tooth of pinion are in contact. If I magnify this, I can see the contact over here. This is very small patch. The whole uh, power is transmitted at the dispatch. Naturally, contact stresses would be phenomenal. An interesting thing is that all other gear teeth they remain in effect to that time. It is only the one or two depends on the sliding ratio or a contact ratio. Now, if I further magnify stress pattern at this patch, I am able to see this stress pattern. The right portion shows a stress equal to the 2 gigapascal. 2 gigapascal is very, very high stress. Ordinary steel strength under compression may be around 500 megapascal, 600 megapascal without heat treatment. That means, this kind of gears require good heat treatment to improve their compressive strength, and that is why I say that. Improving its strength is a one point, but at high contact, very high uh, pressure, wear will be phenomenal if we do not use EP additives. Wear in terms of seizure, we say that complete binding of gear pair, they will not be able to separate. To avoid that kind of thing, we require EP additives. Let us take another example, say IC engine. Typical tribo pairs 
which sustain, which bears all kind of conditions. And major thing is a high temperature. We know operating temperature on most of the components are more than 100 degrees centigrade. Even the cooling water is used, but operating temperature will be 100 degree plus because we do not want to lose efficiency. In that case, all the liquid lubricant need to be resistant to the oxidation. Otherwise, oxidation will happen and due to oxidation, there will be some sort of deposits on the metal surface that will further hinder the functionality of those points. That is why we use detergents and dispersants to avoid hard deposit to be fixed or made on the surface. Similarly, as a because of the high temperature, there is a more possibility of acid formation from a from the liquid which will corrode this component. That means, we need to use corrosion inhibitors also. And as in the previous lecture, we discussed about the multi grade oil. So, engine works with a different temperature. At the start temperature may be 20 degree, may be 30 degree, may be 40 degree, may be 50 degree depending on the environment and it reaches to the temperature more than 100 degree centigrade. So, it requires variation in performance based on operating temperature and that is possible by multigrade oil. That is why we require additives and uh, in previous lecture we mentioned that we use a polymers, we add polymers those are polymer additives will be known in a class of the additives. This is the third example is a refrigeration system. We know the refrigeration system need to operate at a very low temperature that is the meaning of the refrigeration and lubricating oil required a flowability to get circulated from one place to other place. So, that it can carry wear debris particle for that purpose we require low temperature lubricant as I mentioned that we require number of properties from a lubricant. In this situation we need to add additives to impart low temperature properties as well. So, this is uh, indicating there is a really a good need of additives and in um, commercial oil available in the market we do not find any oil without any additives there will be some added to one form or other form. For engine case, this slide shows some sort of experimental results. Say that when the engine bearings assuming the stainless steel uh, assuming the chromium steel uh, surface 1 and chromium steel surface 2, we do not use any lubricant. Then we find the wear constant of the probability of formation of wear particle is roughly 10 is to minus 3. Using paraffinic oil which is a good oil, good lubricating oil, this probability decreases, it reaches somewhere 10 is to minus 7, that means there is a benefit of 10,000 times, wear will decrease roughly 10,000 divided by 3 with 3,000 times. Now, if we use a paraffinic oil with temperature additives, temperature resistant additives, corrosion inhibitors, then where it will further come down that shows a 10 times benefit compared to simple paraffinic oil. Now, we use a complete package where the anti wear additives, EB additives, all additives anti forming adjectives everything is mixed that is what we know as engine oil that is a complete package that where it decreases significantly even the benefit compared to that uh, observation is around almost 100 times. That means, if you want a very low wear rate we should use additives, but without understanding we cannot go ahead additives they conflict with each other, there is always an interference of one additives with other additives. You think over, we use a soapy layer 
to avoid the deposits, but the soapy layer itself may corrode the surface. So, there is always uh, some sort of uh, contradiction and to avoid that kind of contradiction, we need to understand what are those additives and how they function. In uh, brief about the additives, we can say we require a number of properties from the lubricant that is why we require additives. We require adequate thermal strength from a lubricant. Example was given about the gear pair where the contact pressure is more than 2 giga Pascal. That means, a firmer strength need to be that that much level. Further, they require chemical stability, liquid lubricants are many times in acidic nature and they will uh, corrode the surface. So, in that case, we require chemical stability uh, of those lubricants as well as a non corrosive nature of those lubricants. To give a form of strength, adequate strength uh, can be termed in a EP additives time or in boundary additives way. Further, you need to be free from a contamination, it should not happen the liquid lubricant is coming with some sort of contamination from environment and creating more and more wear or developing more wear. In addition, if there is a possibility, they have some sort of sealing properties, which is very difficult to think, but it is required otherwise we will be requiring additional seals, additional components. They need to have a high VI, they should not change viscosity with the temperatures to significant level. We know it is inherent in liquid lubricant to decrease viscosity with increase in a temperature, but the rate of decrease should be controlled, rate of decrease should be low. And finally, comes uh, out gazing, it should not happen that uh, liquid lubricant turn out to be vapor and evaporate. Sometime we are keeping a 1 liter of oil and after some time we find out oh, it is only the half of the oil is remaining and half oil is uh, evaporated, which is not desirable and we should use additives to avoid that. Sometime we use a metal as, as a liquid lubricant additives also or they form some sort of uh, chemicals with acids, esters or some other uh, basics. So, what we say that uh, liquid, lubricant, uh, uh, liquid lubricant can be defined as elements which incorporated either in the liquid base or grease. So, we are not avoiding the grease, we are saying that li uh, liquid and this uh, lubricant additives also come in grease. And uh, liquid lubricant not only the mineral oil, it can be added in synthetic oils also. But what is the requirement? They need to be soluble, properly mixed, it should not happen that they are floating and uniformly dispersed. If it is not uniform distribution, then uh, few metal parts will get a good lubricant and few metal part will not. So, we require a uniform distribution. There are some metals, so uh, metal elements or we say that some uh, material elements which have been used as additive are listed on the left and uh, right hand side of this table and their function, their action is mentioned on the left hand side. I used a word earlier that detergent or dispersion additives. We know the soaps are generally made with the elements, the calcium is one of the common element, sodium is a common element which is used to make the soap. Similar elements can be used to make a detergent and dispersant. How detergent and dispersant acts, we will be covering in a few slides in the next few slides. Similarly, we have discussed uh, extreme pressure additives, we talk about the chloride, sulfur and phosphate, but they require some sort of element to react, so that the layer can be made. One of the common um, EP additive is a boron. Coming to the anti wear, we have number of options available, so late zinc, zinc is one of the very common anti wear additives, copper, phosphorus. Now, there is a slight change, we say that EP additives and anti wear additives they work by a similar manner. 
and EP additives also provide a strength to the surface, reduce the wear by reducing the seizure capabilities or uh, capacity of the metal pair. Anti wear also is the same thing, it avoids the wear, it coats a thin layer on the surface. So, functionally point of view both have a same uh, function, but operating temperature is different. In EP additives the operating temperature at the junction at the interface is higher than the anti wear additives. That is why initially the anti wear came and uh, after that when we provided uh, our uh, additive provided extra strength that were uh, treated on the, the those additives were named as extreme pressure additives. In uh, last lecture also we uh, covered friction modifiers, you say all sort of solid lubric can act as a friction modifier they require some sort of carrier fluid. So, that these particles the particles of uh, solid lubricant can be transferred from one place to the desirable place. So, this is the frictional modifier and uh, here example is given a molybdenum disulfide. It can be silver also, it can be graphite, it can be PTFE. We have huge uh, number of additives in this category. Then there are two interesting additives what we call anti forming additives. We use a dispersant and detergent for their functionality, but these additives create anti forming problem. They make bubbles and we know very well the bubbles if there is bubble then flow rate will come down that will hinder the flow. Uh, rate or reduce the cooling capabilities of that liquid. So, we require anti forming additives and element is used in the silicon. Similarly, we have anti oxidant additives which uh, reduce the chemical uh, reactivity with oxygen and increase the life or service life of the lubricant. Zinc is one of the most commonly used that is why we say that zinc based additives can be used as the anti wear additives and can be used as the antioxidant additives. It can work as dual purpose, it can fulfill dual purpose. Let us start from a first category what we say the detergent or dispersant additive. There are different theories, different hypotheses how detergent works. What we feel that detergent forms a protective layer on the metal surface to prevent deposition of the sludge and varnish which comes from a burning of a, a lubricant and getting after getting oxidation. So, those should be avoided. That is a one function, but there is another possibility that uh, additives who can uh, uh, this, uh, this kind of additives can wrap around particles and avoid the increase in the size or growth of those particles. Often presence of a detergent is measured with a TBN number, what we call the total base number. We have a two number, we quantify detergent or uh, add these additives with the two numbers the TBN and 10. If the acid number is increasing that means, the base number is decreasing and that is why we say that we should check these numbers we want to find out whether there is sufficient detergent or not, if there was intended function of detergent. And these are the some uh, elements name given which uh, help in uh, detergent. Now, what we are discussing uh, with uh, how we say the what is the functionality of detergent, I am assuming that there are some wear debris, there are some sort of uh, sludge particles, some sort of uh, non desirable particles coming near the surface. So, I am assuming this line is a representing any metal surface. 
I am keeping in a vertical direction and these are the particles maybe in a nanometer size or maybe in micron size. They try to come and uh, get deposit on the surface. They have some sort of gumming characteristics, they have some sort of adhesiveness, they will come and stick to the surface, but they do not have a good properties. They may be having a wear properties also, they can scratch on the surface. So, what is uh, required? We require to avoid this kind of accumulation of these particles. If we are able to avoid this kind of accumulation, this kind of additives can be removed easily by filtration system or uh, even if they are not removed, they remain in suspension, they are not going to harm the surface. Service life of the that tribal pair will be much larger. So, this is the main function, do not allow accumulation on the surface. And let the surface be free from this particle as far as possible. And this is possible with a some sort of soapy characteristics. You say that detergents or uh, detergent additives, they are soaps of high molecular weight, which can stick more easily to the surface. If the low molecular weight it will uh, it can be removed easily. High molecular weight they stick too much or is with a greater force and they need to be soluble in oil, it should not happen that uh, they get separated from the oil. This slide shows some sort of a hypothesis, not 100 percent correct, but uh, some sort of uh, hypothesis how detergent will act. We say that detergent acts because of the binding age uh, sorry particle they get accumulated agglomerate on the surface because of the binding agent. Now, I have a two approaches either encapsulate this particle or encapsulate binding agent, so that they do not stick to the surface. I can simply take analogy uh, from police and uh, crime action. So, criminals are generally kept in cell away from the society, they should not harm the society. It is nothing, there is no purpose that you take uh, those criminals and uh, kill them or beat them in uh, prison. What we are doing in this case is the same thing, we are trying to uh, keep a cage around this particle, they do not agglomerate, they do not spoil the metal surface, we are trying to keep it out away from the desirable surface, the same thing. We are assuming there is a detergent and then detergent tries to our encapsulate binding agent and uh, lead particle be free. If particle is free, it cannot have, it will not have a binding agent, it will not increase in a size, that is a one point. Uh, there is uh, there is other option, encapsulate this particle and let binding agent be free. So, either of this approach will work, it will solve the purpose for which we require detergents and uh, this analogy works with almost for every additives. We have a number of examples, we will uh, explore those. Same action with uh, dispersants, only the difference comes uh, that is uh, indicated here, say that detergents like dispersants are blended in lubricant, they are mixed with a lubricant to remove and neutralize harmful product. Remove from a surface and neutralize, but in addition detergent, detergent has additional uh, um, say functionality to form a protective layer on the surface. While Dispersants they do not have that functionality, they do not require that functionality to make a protective layer on the surface. So, in this situation a dispersant with anti wear additives can be utilized easily, because they do not make any layer, but they try to suspend particles, it may be that particle may be 
undesirable water, undesirable fuel or some sort of uh, processed fluid or uh, oxidized product or burnt product that to be within liquid, liquid, uh, liquid lubricant. So, we can say this person isolate the particles from each other, they make a barrier between the particles and they do not allow particles to join together. The way we have understood the boundary attitudes, so they have also similar kind of characteristics. They have a polar head and a long tail. Long tail is required to get suspended in, uh, in liquid and polar head is required to uh, get attached to that particle. Now, depends on the which particle we want to encapsulate, which particle we want to really capture, additives will change accordingly, but they will be in the same category of dispersants. That is a we can say they have almost same functionality as a detergent has, but detergent will have additional property, additional requirement compared to dispersants. We have antivir additive, say that antivir additives uh, may work like a boundary uh, film between the metal pair, it prevent metal to metal contact by making a thin layer, thin coating on the surface. So, it has a both a function to reduce friction and as well as a reduce of wear, reduce friction because they make interface weaker and allow lesser friction or uh, lesser torque to be exerted on the surface. But to differentiate from the EP additives, we are mentioning this kind of uh, surface is for lighter to moderate load. If there is a load is extreme load, very high contact pressure, then we are bound to use extreme pressure additives, which have more bond energy compared to anterior additives. And a uh, couple of examples are given, we have already discussed about the steric acid, which is a boundary additive, so is a polar uh, lubricant additive, it has a polar hat to get attached to the surface and in tell the way we mentioned about the dispersion, they have almost a similar kind of uh, physical form. Zinc compounds, uh, ZDDP is uh, one of the common uh, component use, uh, common uh, additives used as an anterior additive. Even the molybdenum disulfide and the graphite can work as an anterior additive because they really reduce interface shear strength, they reduce the friction. So, they can be named, they can be put in a category of anterior additives. Next category is the anti forming additive. The, this picture shows the forming action of a liquid lubricant. It often happens in the bearings, when we are pressurizing the liquid to pass through the convergent region inclined surface. As a liquid is a pressurized and passed, when it release it comes with a some sort of bubbles because of surface tension and they remain in a bubble form. So, easiest way is that reduce the surface tension collapse this bubble as soon as possible, because if there are so many bubbles the pumpability will reduce, we require extra force to pump the liquid. In addition, these bubbles may keep some sort of air or oxygen with that in contact with the surface. So, they will increase corrosion probabilities or rusting probabilities with that and we want to avoid it. We say that anti forming uh, obviously the forming can be defined as a formation of air bubble in the liquid I mean we are talking about the air coming into contact with the liquid or coming in a contact with the solid surface sometime when due to shaking and all uh, this kind of uh, form will be made and if we are using detergent and dispersion additives forming will be slightly on the higher side that will increase the tendency of 
form or making bubbles in liquid. As I mentioned it interferes with flow rate. In addition they interfere with the heat transfer also because the air has a low heat transfer rate, liquid has a high heat transfer rate. But if you are providing some sort of bubbles in between or uh, some sort of bubbles are coming in between overall heat transfer rate will reduce because of this. In addition uh, this forming is undesirable from oxidation point of view as it uh, provides air or oxygen to surface. Now, you need uh, additives which reduce the surface tension between air and liquid to collapse the bubble and uh, one of the common additives is based on a silicon. The silicon polymers are used in very small quantity in liquid lubricants to avoid the forming, to avoid the effect on heat transfer and mass flow rate to reduce the possibility of oxidation as a collapse of the bubble before reaching to the contacting surface will reduce a oxygen or air which is carried over the surface. Now, as I mentioned about the cage around the undesirable surface, undesirable particles same thing we can um, explain uh, action of antioxidant additives or sometimes we use a word oxidation inhibitors. They encapsulate oxygen itself. Say that oxidation happens at the high temperature and high pressure. And if the oxidation happens, what is a loss? Some sort of gummy deposits will be made on the surface, reduce the clearance, change the physics, change the mechanism, and cause undesirable functions or undesirable uh, failures of those tribopairs. And when this kind of gummy substance happen they are very sensitive towards a couple of materials like a copper and lead alloy which are very common bearing materials. That means, if we are using a oil for engine we need to use antioxidant otherwise all the bearings will get corroded. Similarly, as I mentioned that it reduce the clearance and addition what we say because of this gummy substance the viscosity of the liquid will increase. If viscosity of the liquid will increase that will cause uh, more and more friction loss, more power loss. How they function we are trying to keep the same manner. We have some sort of additives in oil whenever they find a oxygen nearby their chemical affinity is more than the liquid lubricant. They immediately come around oxygen react with the surface and consume that available oxygen, but as these are chemically acting with the oxygen the depletion is obvious after certain duration antioxidant need to be added again in oil or that is why we call as a reconditioning of oil. You need to change the lubricating oil by adding some sort of uh, additives in liquid lubricant either directly we, we cannot do directly. So, that is why we re require some sort of a refining process and uh, often uh, that is uh, quantified when to when this oil need to be replaced by 10 number. This is one of very common parameter whenever we check the lubricant uh, oil we will be discussing this in uh, oil conditioner monitoring. When we want to find the health of oil we go ahead with the oil conditioner monitoring 
we try to find out the parameters whether element have depleted or desirable properties have depleted and that one check is a tan number. The tan number more than 3 that means, it does not have antioxidant additives, it is ready to oxidize, it is going to increase the viscosity of oil, the better you replace it with a new oil or you need to recondition that oil. There are uh, some other uh, additives what we keep in the same category that is uh, known as the corrosion inhibitors and resist, uh, rust inhibitors. We are keeping in the same category keep, uh, being a reason that rust is a name given with a ferrous metal. If ferrous, uh, ferrous metal gets corroded that will say that is rusting. It is only the English language change chemical form will not be different. When uh, corrosion it is uh, corroding the surface is making some sort of porous layer on the surface and uh, that is easily removed that can be easily removed that will cause a wear rate on the surface. Keep in mind we use anti wear additives also as a corrosive agent or we say make a corrosive layer on the surface, but the thickness of that corrosive layer is much smaller. While well, here we are talking about the corrosion rate is much uh, sorry in that earlier case a corrosive layer was smaller, while in this case corrosive layer thickness is more thin layer have a almost same strength, but a thick layer of corrosion will have a more strength uh, lesser strength that can be removed easily. Now, we say that uh, this can be avoided by removing oxygen which is dissolved in a water or oil wherever uh, uh, metal surfaces are used and again and again getting consumed. So, we need to replenish it the depletion is possible we need to recondition. Again how they are working you can see there is a different two different forms which are shown it has a polar end and this a long tail. You see that it comes in a surface uh, attack on the surface not attack it at, attached on the surface and does not allow oxygen or water molecule to come near the surface keep separation from oxygen and water molecule that is a one way physical point and chemically they make uh, some other uh, form which is not harmful. Now, again we can say um, um, mechanism one hypothesis is that this kind of uh, additives they are making thin layer and providing shield against oxygen and water that means, every solid lubricant should work as a rust inhibitors. It gate comes in a contact and attached to the surface, reduce the chances of rusting, reduce the chances of corrosion. If you are using anti wear additives that also are rust inhibitors, that is a contradiction. We are saying anti wear additives as a chemical form, they make corrosive layer than surface to prevent further corrosion. So, they can be used uh, we can use a word for uh, rust in uh, uh, anti wear additives as a rust inhibitors. They allow corrosion for small scale only for finer level only which is negligible. And there are uh, some uh, example given in the phosphate we have already covered uh, it uh, makes a layer on the surface low friction uh, surface and avoid uh, further rusting of the surface. A kind of uh, additives or a pore point uh, depressant we say that a refrigeration system we require a operating temperature much lower than 0 degree centigrade where the most of the liquid lubricant will not be able to flow easily unless they are mixed with the some sort of additives. So, we can say for lowest temperature at which the lubricant will flow in absence of additives they form some sort of crystals These are waxy crystals they increase the viscosity drastically 
as a, there is a drastic increase in viscosity because of the waxy characteristics. They will not flow easily and will not reach to the desirable uh, place. So, if you want to avoid that kind of a crystal formation, we should not allow one crystal to come in a contact with other crystal. It is something like a divide and rule. You divide all the crystal particle, you remove one from, uh, from other and do not allow uh, agglomeration of those wax particles or wax crystals. Right? So, what we say that we try to um, avoid the wax formation or you change some sort of a uh, structure of this uh, lubricant, so that they do not uh, take in too much with a decrease in a viscosity uh, uh, decrease in a temperature. We say that this kind of uh, pore point uh, represents they reduce a pore point and can work with a low temperature. Methyl acrylate polymers are one of the common um, pore point depressants. We have covered a uh, few additives, but as I mentioned that uh, gaining the knowledge will always be helpful as we have understood that solid lubricant may act as a rust inhibitor or corrosion inhibitors. That means, when we are doing a coating of solid lubricant on the surfaces, then we do not really require additional rust inhibitors. If we know that kind of solid lubricant will remain there for long service life. But if there are some detergent and uh, rust inhibitors, then we need to be very careful about physical attachment or chemical attachment of added to the surface, because detergent and uh, rust inhibitors they will try to separate anterior additives from the surface. That means, we require a perfect combination a perfect percentage of detergent and rust inhibitors with anterior additives or ZDDP. If I am keeping 3 percent of ZDDP which is high concentration, we know higher the concentration more possibility of attachment to the surface and a low percentage of the detergent, but that low percentage should not be very low which avoids this functionality. So, a good permutation combination is required, good number of experiments is required as a really very hard research area. People have done a lot of research, but they are keeping all in a closed book, they do not share easily and that is why the most of the industry they do not document or they do not publish results. They publish the results only metal A or element A is doing this or a complete package is working satisfactorily but they do not share all the results. Now, there are some uh, precautions which we need to be accounted. We say that corrosion inhibitors if used uh, with the ammonia plant where there is a possibility of ammonia leakage, then there is a possibility of uh, damage. So, try to avoid corrosion inhibitors in presence of ammonia which has a uh, possibility to damage the overall system. Then uh, we are saying uh, whenever there are uh, there are uh, dispersants um, available or used, we should use antioxidant along with that because we know dispersant will allow more and more oxygen or more and more air to bring uh, near the surface they will collapse the bubble or um, they will make in such a manner um, encapsulate the surface, remove the coating from surface, allow free surface to be getting exposed to oxygen. So, we should use uh, antioxidation for that purpose. Now, there is a we, this is the last lecture. So, I am giving a few slides on the lubricant selection. The, this slide is uh, taken from uh, one of the handbook, which shows uh, some limits for the grease, solid lubricant and liquid lubricants. 
but these are not very strict limits that is why the you can see the band from one lubricant to other lubricant there is a some sort of a variation is possible. So, we say that the low speed in this case the speed on x axis is given in mm per second while uh, pressure on the y axis is given in kilo Newton per meter square or kilo Pascal. Now, for the solid lubricants for dry lubricants which do not flow speed and the pressure limits are lower. You can see this kind of rectangle that is a lower and this is the transition some sort of uh, liquid uh, so dry lubricant also can act in this way. This is the minimum limit as a this is variation. Now, there is a limit for the grease when the grease is been used for plane bearing or employed for the plane bearing. But the limit for the rolling element bearing or the grease limit for the rolling element bearing is on higher side that is interesting to note. If I use a similar grease there is a lower limit for the plane bearings, but higher limit for the rolling element bearings. What is the reason? Say that in a plane bearing there is a more sliding more friction more heat generation for the same heat speed because of the high coefficient of friction while in rolling bearing coefficient of friction will be lesser. So, more speed can be allowed for this purpose. Coming to the liquid lubrication it has a higher speed limit, but lower limit compared to um, uh, solid lubricant particularly for the pressure side. highest limit is for the solid lubricant which can sustain more pressure. As I mentioned this data are um, taken from a handbook, handbook is around 30 year old. So, the, this gives a guidance, but not a firm limit. We can see yeah, if there is a limit for the dry lubricant I can try grease, if there, there is a limit for the grease I can try for the liquid lubricant, if there is a limit for the liquid lubricant we can try gases. If the speed of operation is increasing, while if the pressure is increasing we will shift from a liquid lubricant to grease to dry to the uh, uh, solid lubricants. Some uh, important points have been uh, given on uh, this slide. So, that start from uh, scratch choose lubricant which only meet the friction and wear requirement that is the first point for travelogical applications. However, if the design says that now these liquid lubricants are so required for cooling then lubricant selection will change and there is a too many contamination we require to carry this liquid lubricant this kind of contamination do not allow to get accumulated to one surface the liquid and then choice will be different or if there is a possibility to avoid the corrosion. Take an example of uh, number of metal parts steel parts when they are finished when they are um, fabricated let us take an example of lathe machine. When we fabricate uh, a shaft on the lathe machine give a finish to the surface immediately um, you can see the uh, labor or uh, person who is uh, involved in fabrication he will apply a grease layer. So, that a corrosion can be avoided. So, we say that if a lubricant is required to avoid a corrosion the choice will be different liquid is required for cooling choice will be different liquid is required for contamination to avoid the contamination the choice will be different, but we are concentrating more on a friction and wear requirement. These are the prime requirement, there is a possibility of additional requirement, there is a possibility of temperature is going high and we need to keep lower temperature, then the cooling can be added aspect. That may be quite possible we can use the same lubricant, but with a pressurized liquid to allow more and more cooling. So, keep in mind we are worrying we are thinking only from friction and wear point of view and then we are suggesting how to select lubricant. So, first step think about the cost 
it should be lowest cost for commercial application lowest cost need to be there or uh, otherwise we will not be able to justify our selection. And if possible think about the no lubrication or no re lubrication system once we applied and then think we do not have to re lubricate it again and again and um, we are away from this kind of worry. Typical example for the, uh, this kind of application is the watches we know that uh, the, the lubricant cost is very high then we will not be we will not be able to use in watches, clocks, door locks you know the cheap components, swing machine we do not require re lubrication frequently. Swing machine uh, other than swing machine and all the yeah, door lock we do not do unless some sort of corrosion happen because of the environment. So, think about the cost think about the uh, uh, re lubrication if try to avoid the re lubrication try to keep minimum cost that is the first step. After selecting that if selected lubricant is not fulfilling the function from point of view of this second step you say is there any need to change the lubrication system. Suppose, I selected some sort of molybdenum disulfide which is cheaper or I selected a graphite which is cheaper or PTFE which is cheaper. Now, I had to check am I really getting the right results desirable results that is why I say that is there any need to change the lubrication system due to excessive load if there is excess load if I assume the PTFE and I say there is a load is very high compared to PTFE requirement then I will choose a better lubricant which is the molybdenum disulfide compared to this or if say I will choose a graphite and then choose a molybdenum disulfide or if the speed is higher that may be quite possible we need to think um, about the semi solid lubricant from the solid lubricant the speed of operation is uh, more than what is satisfying a solid lubricant or heat of generation is very high then need to be cool. So, naturally we need to go for the liquid lubricant or there are too many debris and we require a carrier fluid to carry the debris then we require liquid lubricant. So, we say the first we choosing the solid lubricant as such because the lowest cost no re lubrication requirement, but because of the once we select and we try to justify yeah whether it is really satisfying all the requirement is uh, satisfying the speed requirement, is satisfying excess load requirement, is satisfying heat requirement, is satisfying the debris uh, removal requirement. If any of this uh, we say that um, is not satisfying and we need to change uh, lubrication system then we can refer the table which is uh, given in this case. We say that if there is a too much speed we provide a lesser lubricant or uh, lesser viscosity oil then uh, there need to be a some sort of uh, circulation system of oil or we can think of the gas lubrication. Now, you can think from any angle any combination laser viscosity oil if existing uh, lubrication system is fine then we can say yes otherwise we can think about the lubrication system which has a low flow rate thicker oil will be fine will high flow rate low uh, viscosity oil will prefer. And uh, if not satisfying any of this uh, even after selecting this kind of uh, low viscosity oil uh, it is not satisfying the requirement then we need to think about the gases lubrication. However, if the operating temperature is very high then we should choose a high V i at the initial step we are not choosing a high V i oil which will be costly higher and higher V i will be more and more cost. And this uh, oil uh, need to have oil antioxidant additives. If you are purchasing oil from a market, uh, then uh, we need to tell vendor now we require anti additives, antioxidant additives in that. Or we can play with the design also. We can go ahead the high flow rate of the viscosity or uh, uh, high flow rate of uh, low viscosity oil. However, the operating temperature is only high and uh, we do really do not require uh, uh, re lubrication again again because of the compactness or because of the uh, additional system will uh, reduce the reliability then we can again still think about the solid lubricant as it is. 
leaked operating temperature to be on the higher side. Initially operating temperature may be what we thought about the 70 degree and we are not choosing uh, leak, uh, we are choosing some liquid lubricant that is able to reduce the to 70 degree, but it is going to cost me at more and more. That is why we can say now it is going to cost me more I can think about the solid lubricant late operating temperature be 90 degree may be high 100 degree we will change the materials which are coming in a contact we will go with uh, by different materials. Sometime we feel that too much debris because of the environment or because of the circumstances then we need to use a recirculation system with a filtration with a proper filtration. We require a longer life than um, or particularly longer life uh, we say that we do not want to um, think about uh, replacing oil or oil system easily or quickly then we need to think about with the additives oil complete package additive will enhance the life. And finally, comes uh, too much load in addition to any other uh, earlier parameter then we need to think about the some sort of additives which can uh, reduce the load or um, share the load. So, that lesser load is coming on the surfaces. So, this is the last slide of this lecture we can see that is a final selection comes um, after fulfilling the second step we say that if we are lubricating the surfaces and there are too many surfaces not only the one pair which we are wearing. Take an example of ice engine there are more many more than 20 tribo pairs in the ice engine then what will happen we need to choose a lubricant for each tribo pair which will not justify economic uh, cost reliability. We need to choose only one lubrication system recirculation system so that it can uh, reduce the overall uh, operating cost, inventory cost and initial cost. So, we choose a lubricant which satisfy or optimize overall performance. Here the one negative point we can go ahead we can say that some places we require a low viscosity oil, but other places we require high viscosity oil. I will prefer to use a high viscosity oil compared to low viscosity oil to reduce the overall cost initial as well as the running cost. Reason being high viscosity oil is a self compensation. We discussed about the, this stribic curve earlier. We say that high viscosity if the hydrodynamic action is happening and uh, operating term and one component operating temperature is coming over here or the operating uh, point is coming over here. In that situation because of the cell compensation high viscosity will cause more friction will reduce viscosity there. So, late viscosity plays with the self with uh, this is a self uh, healing process or a self adjusting process. So, with this I uh, will try to close uh, this lecture and uh, this module uh, lubrication model. Now, it is time to deal with some mathematics to quantify what we have seen that it will be moderate load, low load, high load, but we talk about some numbers. Our next uh, module is based on that. We will be doing some sort of mathematical modeling, developing some equation and trying to use those equations. Thank you for your attention.